Our next speaker um, is a fabulous and fascinating person. Um, so you all know that Bill Gates is, is the richest man in the world. Uh, it's also generally understood that he's one of the smartest. And so at Microsoft, he's, you know, there's kind of a, a cult that has emerged of like kind of uh, evaluating how smart people are. And at Microsoft, if you're a smart person, they say like, oh yeah, you know, they're a high bandwidth individual. They got a lot of bandwidth, right? Bill Gates described our next speaker as a super high bandwidth person. So speaking as somebody who has the intellectual bandwidth of a Radio Shack ham radio from 1977, I am so looking forward to um, hearing her uh, share out and give us an experience uh, that we can all take away. Uh, Christine Comfort is a leadership and culture coach. Uh, she's sought after for proven strategies by executives at both small companies and large companies. She's an entrepreneur. She's uh, launched and sold five of her own businesses. She's been on, uh, a venture capitalist. She's invested in 500 different startups, including small loser companies like Google. And as part of it, she's like kind of stretched out her own mind and her own consciousness. What it doesn't say on uh, her standard bio is that she's worked as a hospice care worker for over 16 years. What it also doesn't say on her bio is that she was a Buddhist monk for seven years. Please help me welcome me, Christine Comerford. Thank you. Good morning. Hi, you guys. How are you guys doing? Good? Having fun? I was inspired by that. I was inspired by John Mackey. Um, here's the thing. Whenever I have a big windfall, I give half of it away to cool nonprofits. And um, it creates more. How many of you guys have noticed that? That when you get abundance and you give it to cool nonprofits, like you get more? It's like the universe goes right on, sister. High five. Here's some more. Yeah, it's good. Um, we're going to talk about your awesome brain today. We're going to talk about a couple of ways to enroll and engage people really powerfully. We're going to talk about how to experience higher purpose in your body and to know what it feels like. One quick thing, we're going to go over one tool. If we have time or questions, we might go over another one. This is a quick reference guide outside at the Smart Tribes table. You go outside, and right next to the gentleman's room is the Smart Tribes uh, table. And you can get one of these, and you can hang this in your office so you remember to use your tools. Cool. How many of you have had the experience where you have wanted to connect with somebody but you've kind of felt like ships passing in the night. Like, you know, they're kind of like going la, 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 like they're not there with you. Had that experience? Yeah. So the brain needs to have a couple of experiences at work. Please jot this down. The brain needs to aspire. We're cold and hungry, but we're going to, I can see it, the Ritz-Carlton 24-7 room service, 1,000 count Egyptian cotton. So we're cold and hungry now, but we're going somewhere cool. So we need to aspire. What we also need in business is to have insights, our insights, not our boss's insights, not somebody else's, our own insights. So the tools I'm gonna to show you today are gonna to help you create that aspiration in people and help people have insights. The brain, when it experiences you as same as, you're not different from me, so I don't need to resist you. When we can give somebody the experience of same as, we can loop arms with them subconsciously and walk forward to a glorious win-win future, okay? Good. So let's talk about, we're not going to talk about what I've done because I've, I've done various things. Yay on that. Let's talk about, though, tools that you guys can use now. So we've used these tools with a ton of different companies. Doesn't matter what industry you're in, humans are humans. So we're going to learn the three things that human beings crave. Because to get higher purpose, there are some prerequisites. What are the prerequisites to creating the experience of higher purpose? What are some of the prerequisites? What do you have to have? What do you think? Passion, thank you. Yes, you have to have passion for higher purpose. What else do you have to have for higher purpose? Clarity, positive relationships. Willing to break boundaries. Authentic self-knowledge. Confidence in yourself. Maybe sometimes confidence in others. What else do you need to have to create higher purpose? Empathy, courage, commitment. How about trust? Okay. 
Safety. Safety, belonging, and mattering. All together, safety plus belonging plus mattering equals trust. A vision for the future. Where are we going so that I can feel excited about it? Yeah, because if it's like, you know, the 7-Eleven, I don't know that I'm on board. Okay, good. We now know, thanks to Carnegie Mellon, Stanford, Harvard, NYU, MIT, Columbia, that 90% of our decisions, 90% of our behaviors are driven, are dominated by our emotional brain. 90%. We all think that we're such intellectual powerhouses, and we are with 10% of our brain. <laughs> we all go to these awesome universities, and that's so cool. And 90% of our decisions and our behaviors are driven and dominated by our emotional brain. The pathways going from our emotional brain to our intellect are like a six-lane superhighway going in one direction. Whoosh! But the pathways going from the intellect to the emotional brain are like a little teeny trail in the forest. So what does this mean? We are super emotional creatures. And once we understand how to speak to the emotional creature, we can experience higher purpose, we can have greater engagement, we can have more enrollment, we can not have sick days, etc. Artist's rendition of your brain. It's not physiologically accurate. <laughs> what matters is, let's talk about three kind of general areas of your brain that matter at work that matter when we're trying to come together with people. Reptilian brain. Reptilian brain is responsible for temperature regulation, breathing, balance. The reptilian brain, if it could speak, would say dead or not. Not alive or not. <laughs> dead or not. The reptilian brain is a stimulus response machine coded for survival. Survival, physical survival. Next, mammalian brain. The mammalian brain is all about emotional survival. This is where we have the fight, flight, freeze response. The mammalian brain is where we have the hippocampus, very important, learning and memory, important at work, learning and memory, yeah. Now, how many of you have noticed that the biggest memories you have in your life have either big, huge positive or big, huge painful emotions attached to them? Yeah, that's your hippocampus, hippocampus doing its job. Wow, this is really important, I better remember this. So when a company has mission, vision, values that aren't exciting, and you ask somebody, hey, what's your company's mission? Oh, just a second. And they're going through their file cabinet. <laughs> okay, circle slash all over that, right? Hippocampus, not engaged, not emotional. All right, layered on top, neocortex. Neocortex, prefrontal cortex right behind your forehead. Oh, if the mammalian brain could speak, it would say friend or foe. Better than dead or not, a little more of all, but still protecting. Okay, are we going to eat lunch together or I'm going to be lunch? Okay. The neocortex, the prefrontal cortex, best part about being human or about being a dolphin. Um, that's pretty much the only ones that have them. So the neocortex, the prefrontal cortex is all about, I'm here, but I want to be there. How do I get there? So the prefrontal cortex is where we have planning, decision-making, vision, okay, differentiation, problem-solving. If the neocortex could speak, it would say, what can I create? A little more interesting than safe or not, dead or not, okay? When we're under a lot of stress, changing directives, et cetera, we will often go into what we call the critter state because let's call it a cute name because it's kind of a gnarly place, okay? The critter state is like, you're like a little critter, safe or not, dead or not, fight, flight, freeze. Critter state, we don't have access to the best part about being human. Prefrontal cortex is not available. It is offline. How many of you have experienced critter state maybe even this morning? Yeah. Guess what? That's called part of being human. Now, what we want to do at work, though, is we want to get people into what we call the smart state, where we get the flame email from Joe, and we go, wow, Joe must be having a bad day. Okay? Whereas otherwise, right, the critter state response is, battle. You know, and we kick into that. Now, let's look at one tool that will help you navigate this. Because here's the thing. The more people that we have in their smart state, smart state, all three parts working together, the more we have what's called a smart tribe. Smart tribe, good for business. This is a thousand companies that we have pulled using our tools. Sales closing faster, 50%. Team member engagement up 35 to 50%. You don't need to hire more people. You need your people in their smart state. 
the more people in their smart state, the more you have what's called a smart tribe, and you get these results. Engagement, 6,700%, and of course, revenues and profits. So we don't need more people necessarily. We need our people actually using all of their brain because they feel emotionally connected. Now let's get to why are we doing all this? As your company grows, you navigate revenue inflection points. What's cool is it's pretty darn formulaic. Don't be totally impressed by this. It took us 34 years to figure it out. <laughs> but there are inflection points where a company, when it hits a certain level of revenue, it becomes a whole different company. How many of you have noticed this? And you're like, what? Yeah, the people who worked here don't quite fit here. And this role just morphed into three. And God, our floor wax sucks. Let's make it into a dessert topping. You know, you have to just like, you know, move around. The purple stuff is the people stuff. The green stuff is the money stuff. The blue stuff is the business model stuff. But you all know, you do the purple stuff, you take care of the people, and they figure out the money and the model, right? It's all about the people. So now it's time for tools. Maslow was right. Maslow nailed it. One little modification, though. Once we have food, water, shelter, warmth, and Wi-Fi, <sighs> you missed that part. Then and only then do we need safety, belonging, and mattering. Safety, freedom from fear, certainty, the ability to navigate even when we're freaked out, belonging, connection, we're in this together. I'm part of a tribe, I have equal value. Mattering. I'm seen and appreciated for my unique gifts. I am not a cog in a wheel. Let's look at how we can decode this. When a person's in critter state and they crave safety, they take safety away. It's a scary world inside, identity coherence. So I see how scary it is outside. So if someone's spreading gossip, fear, and rumors, they're simply in critter state asking for safety. Make sense? If somebody is isolating, um, withholding information, kind of pulling back, they're in critter state and they're probably craving belonging. They're not feeling like they belong in the tribe, so they're isolating and pulling back from the tribe. Mattering. If somebody's in their critter state, you've all had this experience, and they're craving mattering, but they're not getting the experience of mattering, they take mattering away. Condescending, making others feel small. People aren't bad. No people are bad. Just behaviors work or don't. It's our job as conscious leaders to decode what emotional experience somebody is asking for. Start to listen when you're at Starbucks. Is that person asking for safety from the other person? Are they asking for belonging? Are they asking for battering? Nobody buys what you sell. They don't buy a product or service. They buy an emotional experience. Whole Foods. Why do you shop at Whole Foods? What experience do you get? Safety, belonging, or mattering? Mattering? What's your experience? You can, there's no right answer. What's your experience for shopping at Whole Foods? Belonging. Okay, yeah, I'm part of like the eat healthy tribe. Yeah, for me, it's safety. I want like good, safe food so that my family is okay. We all buy products for safety, belonging, or mattering. Let's do a quick lab together, then we're going to do a breakout. When someone has the behavior of fight, flight, freeze, what might they be craving? Safety, belonging, or mattering? Safety, good. Us versus them. There's us, and then there's the suits up in the executive suite. Us versus them. Belonging, good, good. Victim, complaining, whining. I have no power, nobody appreciates me. Safety, belonging, mattering. Mattering, good, good. Perpetually seeking recognition? Mattering, yeah. I unloaded the dishwasher, woo, party. Okay, now let's like, you know, wash the car, okay? Procrastination. Procrastination, perfectionism, two sides of the same coin. It's a combo pack. Safety, belonging, mattering. There's some safety, good, yeah? Ooh, tell me why, tell me why mattering. What's your experience around that? <coughs> Pardon me? It has to be good enough or I might not matter. And I don't know how to succeed, so I'm gonna stand here and freeze and go, ah, and be in my critter state. Yeah, good, okay. Here's how we can bring safety, belonging, mattering, and behavior. Truly engaging mission, vision, values. So we know what the tribal code is, so we know how to be safe in the, in the culture, how to belong in the culture, how to matter in the culture. 
Number one pe uh, penalty punishment for human beings for centuries, it's not death. What is it? Excommunication, etc. Because you're not safe. You don't belong. You got kicked out of the tribe. You don't matter. We kicked you out of the tribe. Why is social media so popular? Safety, belonging, mattering. Belonging. I found the hamster lovers. Okay, what else? Mattering. I found my hamster lover tribe, and they like seeing my pictures of my hamsters in their little outfits, and I'm seen. Yeah, good. Individual development plans. At work, when we give people career pathing, individual development plans, how they can grow and evolve, they're safe, they belong, they matter. We give them that experience. Cultural rituals, high fives, celebrating each other, celebrating each other for modeling values, safety, belonging, mattering. Accountability structures, fairness, etc. Safety, belonging, mattering. Let's give people through our behavior the experience of safety, belonging, mattering, and let's give them the experience through our communication. Because when we do, people take greater ownership than ever before, are more engaged than ever before, step out of tactical into strategic, and have more clarity, focus, accountability. So let's look at communication. Somebody's in critter state. They're spreading fear. They're not experiencing safety. I've got your back. We're in this together. Let's figure out a plan, a backup plan, a backup plan to the backup plan. Someone's in critter state. They're isolating and withholding information. You're like, what's up with that? Ah, they just want some belonging. Great. I'm so glad you're on the team. Who else can we bring together? You know, you're going to create this tribal experience of togetherness. Somebody's in critter state, maybe. They're putting people down. Um, they are maybe doing some bullying. Sometimes we see that with mattering. Hey, you're my top pick to run, to run this project. I totally appreciate you. I see you. I see your gifts. Let's do this. Okay? Now, all of you guys, sooner or later, need to do an SBM index. Why? Because it's a really great way to find out how your tribe is doing. An SBM index is three questions each. Three questions safety, three questions belonging, three questions mattering. Then we find out, whoa, the investments team? Oh boy, it's not looking good over there. The investments team needs belonging, right? The belo we also need belonging in admin. You can understand then who needs what where, and then when we do the roundup across the whole company, what does the whole company need? Then you know, when you do your culture plan and talk to us afterwards at the table if you need help with this, you understand if there's growth, appreciation, measurement, engagement stuff you need to do. We call this an SBM index heat map because you can see where the hot areas are and you can see where the green stuff is. Everything's cool where the green is. Everything might be working great and then you might be blowing up, right? Right around here. Oh, okay, well, we need to do some more appreciation and acknowledgement. All right, let's, uh, let's look at what this means in sales and then we're going to do a lab. In sales, what this means is when we find out the emotional experience that people want from us, safety, belonging, mattering from our product or service, then we can talk to the three parts of their brain. Let's move this together. So example, the prospect must code you as same as. You're the same as me. I want the experience of safety. You're providing safety. Kumbaya, we're in this together. So the prospect must code you as same as to buy, the client to buy, and to buy more. So one of our clients, commodity business. I cannot stress that enough. Commodity business, let's use our little pointer, webinar to healthcare prospects. Pay attention to what we're doing here. Crucial and controversial new legislation. Crucial. Oh, oh. Reptilian brain's like, ah, must stay not dead. Okay. <laughs> controversial. Oh, I'm going to analyze that. Okay, we're talking right to the prefrontal cortex. Controversial. I'm going to think about that and get analytical. Okay. We're talking to the two parts of the brain. To ensure you know how to make the best choices. Best choices feel good. Mammalian, best choices. Let me analyze that. Okay. Prefrontal, good. So I can build trust so I can stay in the tribe. That's a super mammalian thing. But ooh, if I don't stay in the tribe, reptilian might be dead. Okay. So we talk to the brain. What happens? They do a webinar, 210 prospects. 77, excuse me, 210 attendant attend the, the webinar, 77 result, 32 closed sales. 
That's freaking nuts, okay? That's nuts. Those are nuts results. Because they got the emotional experience they craved. And of course, they get all sorts of other good stuff too. So let's do a lab. In a minute, we're going to do a buddy lab. The heartbeat clap goes like this, like a heartbeat, okay? When you hear the heartbeat clap, that means the lab time is over. So when you hear it, you start doing it, and then we get this heartbeat swarm, and the people who are talking go, oh, is that a heartbeat? Perhaps I should stop, stop talking, okay? And that's how we all come back, okay? Good. So what we're going to do in a sec is we're going to buddy up, and, if, and don't go into critter state. If there's, like, nobody near you, don't go, ah, okay? <laughs> you can have pods of three, okay? Just pods of two or three. What you want to do is first do a little bit of navel contemplation. Hmm, who are three people I would like to increase connection with? Perhaps a customer, perhaps a prospect, perhaps your significant other, you'll thank me later, okay? Perhaps a child who's not doing their homework, you know, whatever. They're craving a certain emotional experience, let's unpack it. So pick three stakeholders. What does each one crave? Safety, belonging, mattering. How do you know? How do you know? Look at their behavior, okay? And then, what are some messages you can give them? There's a certain person in my life who um, craves safety. And this person, whenever I go out to dinner, it's really important that this person gets a good table at the restaurant. What else is behind that? She, what else does she crave? There's some safety. At, thank you, mattering. I got to have the right table, right? So whenever we make a, a restaurant reservation, to avoid critter state, I make three. Yeah, and they're 10 minutes apart. And then when the standard phone call comes up, oh, 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 what if we don't get the right table? I'm like, oh, I have got this. <laughs> we've got chart house, we've got such and such, and we've got such and such. We have a buffet of choices. I'm even going to go in advance, and I'm going to give 20 bucks to each maitre d'. We're going to have great tables. It's like the world is your buffet of awesome tables. And she goes, oh, whew. okay, here's the thing. Just find out. You need to find out. You need to find out what somebody's go-to is in critter state and prevent it. You also need to know what lights somebody up. So if somebody craves mattering often in their critter state, a great way to light them up is to just give them mattering on a regular basis. We can preempt critter state by understanding their go-to behavior. So in a sec, we're going to buddy up. We're going to take about 10 minutes for this. Okay, I will time it. Make sure that it's equal opportunity. Make sure that your buddy and you both get to talk. Okay? Self-directed 10 minutes. All right? Questions on safety, belonging, mattering before we unpack three important people in our life, what they're craving, and what we could give to them. Question. Yes. Dyads. Unless somebody goes, ah, oh, there's nobody for me. And then do a, a three. Yeah. A, tri a triad. Other questions on safety, belonging, mattering? I'll keep loose track of time, and I'll do heartbeat clap when it's time to come back. Okay. Go. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good. Let's take some shares. First of all, does this make sense? Safety, blowing, mattering? Is this a useful tool? Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. 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 Frank's like, oh, heck yeah. <laughs> I love when people don't say yeah. They go, heck yeah. <laughs> Let's do some shares. Let's do some shares. Yes. What would you like to share? Stand up and holler. If we have a hand. <laughs> Woo! What I think was most profound just now was that what we got through the movement and so much of what we liked and was amazing was... Battering. She's like, yes, that was me. That was, yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> was though that actually those different dynamics actually change throughout the course of the relationship with someone. So it might be battering start... Oh, thank you. This I think he's so just top it and talking to the top of it. <laughs> oh, well. Um, <laughs> so that mattering actually... Like we were starting off with mattering, and then maybe someone in the relationship safety belonging became important. And then at the end, mattering might have been important to wrap up the whole thing. So it's very interesting to see and, and really thankful for the awareness that, that changes. Nothing, life is not static. Woo, let's clap. Yeah. Yay, thank you. Oh, that matters. <laughs> so safety, belonging, mattering is also contextual. Contextual. When you're meeting with your financial planner person, do you crave safety, belonging, or mattering? Safety, don't mess the money up. Yeah. When you're with your friends, what do you crave most? Safety, belonging, mattering. 
Yeah, for me, it's like, girl tribe, woo, yes. When you're with your uh, significant other, what do you crave most? Safety, belonging, mattering. Whatever's true for you. Belonging and mattering. Yeah, whatever. Some people say all of them. Yeah. Yeah, and at different points in your life, you might crave one or, or over the other. And yeah, in different contextual settings. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Let's take a couple more shares. Good, let's unpack this. Back table, yes. We, um, we started looking at it, and what came out of our conversation was the sense of belonging was at the core for everybody. That without belonging, there is no safety and doesn't really matter. And so that we're missing that as society, as workplaces, so on and so forth. So it's a really nice, like, kind of shift for us in the way we thought about it. Beautiful. Did we just notice that in the recent election? Were, were people belonging with each other? I mean, what I got from that was, wow, we have a country that doesn't belong with each other. I'll take that weird thing. Yes, because he was like, and you'll take this now? Um, yeah, yeah. And let's also look at belonging. The word belonging, Old English, belongen. Okay, belongen is where it comes from. And belongen means to deem suitable. I will belong in that horse. I will not belong in that horse and purchase it from you. Yeah, belonging comes from deemed suitable. So you're in the tribe if you are deemed suitable. Yeah. We always have, as humans, a background process scanning for, do I belong or not? Do I belong or not? You know? Um, when we see people who do scary things, you know, like shoot up airports and stuff, how are they described often? Loner. Because you can't kill your own tribe if you belong to it. It's not your tribe. Yeah. Good, good. Let's take a few more. You guys have to experience this cube. It's totally weird. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the thought was, initially, a bully, you, you think like a little dog barking because it's scared. But also, I think a bully wants to make all the decisions because they might want to belong. They're irrelevant if they're not the ones if they're not needed to make the decision. So it's another aspect of, I think a bully can be wanting belonging, but again, yes. driving people away, so he's perpetually unhappy. What else might a bully be wanting? Mattering. Mattering. And going about it in an ineffective way, mm -hmm. because they're in critter state. Okay. Thank right. you. You know, we haven't been clapping for the shares. Just like, this is like a group clap for all the shares. <laughs> Okay, just don't throw it back to me. Because <laughs> my eyeballs look different directions, and this one's like, what's happening over there? And this one's looking forward, and I'm like, go ahead. Um, we were talking about, uh, this is great, help, helpful to think about the messages that the people might need. I talked to my, my daughter, who's bragging a lot and condescending other people, and she's got the mattering thing, I yes, think. Yes, yes. But if you just are giving encouraging messages, at some point, is that actually just enabling? I mean, maybe that's the next stage, but we're curious about how, to what extent do you need to get the person to be reflecting on the behavior, and how do you do that? Yeah, okay, good, good, thank you. Um, oh, and wait to clap. Yeah, because clap is important. Okay, so here's the thing. We don't use safety, belonging, mattering to enable. We still hold our employees accountable, you know? We still have healthy boundaries and all that good stuff, and it has to be authentic. Because how many of you had the experience of somebody totally kissing up to you? Yeah, you're like, la, 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 it's not landing, and now I like you even less. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay? <laughs> it has to be authentic. So often when someone is in critter state, we can ask them what experience they want. Oh, crit reference guide. Remember how I mentioned this? Okay. This is what's so awesome about this. You're learning this FAR panel. You're learning safety, belonging, mattering. Okay, so when someone's in critter state, um, or if just somebody is having a repetitive, interesting behavior, you know, um, you can, because behaviors, people are good, behaviors sometimes work or don't. Look at the middle panel, and you'll see there's a tool called the outcome frame, which is one of my favorite tools on the planet. And you can say, ah, what would you like? You know, and they'll start to tell you. And you have to use it the way you print it, because... It's hypnotic language, but it's not like Mwah. hypnotic language. It's actually good hypnotic language. It's pinky swear, only for good, not for evil, hypnotic language. What would you like? Ah, what will having that do for you? How will you know when you have it? Back to your 
somebody's, no, it was yours. Right, it was yours. When you were saying that you wanted some mattering, whoops, I mean, I want belonging, whoops, I mean, I want safety. And I was saying, how will you know when you have safety? So when you're unpacking this and you're explaining safety, belonging, matter to people and they're saying, you know, I really want to belong, just jump to question number three. How will you know when you have it? Will I be invited to more meetings? You know, you have to understand. You don't know what their emotional experience is. You don't know what belonging means to, to them. So please use the outcome frame. And you'll get the little thingy from us. And if you leave your card in the little green box on the Smart Tribes Institute table, um, we'll send you a digital one of these. And you can have a lunch and learn with your team. Okay? And then this stuff is really self-explanatory. So I want us to unpack what somebody's emotional experience is because two things. Everybody has a different map of reality and we really don't know what it's like to be them. And also there's a term in neuroscience called complex equivalence. Complex equivalence simply means we have different definitions of the same word. So if someone says something, you can't assume that you know what their experience is. The two words in the English language that have the most varying complex equivalents are integrity. Okay, that's a situation right there. Okay. And respect. That's why we have all the songs about not getting, I'm not feeling the R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Well, I'm giving it to you, but I'm not feeling it. Okay. <laughs> this is where you use an outcome claim, right? How will you know when you have it? This is how I will have R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Okay. Did that land for you? Okay, just because I did do... Okay, yeah. You know, the outcome frame, seriously, it's a beautiful thing. My favorite question is, what of value might you risk or lose? So whenever executives, when we're doing executive coaching, oh, I want more strategic time, I want more strategic time. Huh, what will have that do for you? How will you feel? Um, how will you know when you have it? Well, I'll have, you know, three hours each Friday, blah, blah, blah. What of value might you risk or lose? <sighs> I'll have to stop rescuing people. I'll have to get out of the weeds, right? I'll have to change my experience somehow. You have to get present to the cost. Because have you ever noticed, if it was totally okay to have something, you'd have it already. Okay? We're smart people. The outcome frame also, in the context of safety, belonging, mattering, helps you get to the desired state. So you're here. This is your present state, and you're going, wow, it would be so cool to be over there. It's important to remember that a while ago, you were over here saying, wow, it would be so cool to be there. Then you got here, and because we're human, you celebrate for like a nanosecond. Yay. Oh, you know what? I really want to be there, though. Ah, oh, that's where the beautiful people are. You know, that's where I want to go. So the outcome frame helps you get present to where you are, unpack the desired state, help your brain, do what I said earlier, aspire and have insights, double down with the outcome frame, woo, okay? And you walk people to the desired state, they bask in it, and they say, oh, it is warm here, and there's umbrella drinks and good looking <laughs> people. I want this desired state. Oh, there's a cost to the desired state. What a value might I risk or lose? Ah, it's worth it. Okay? Good. Questions? I will disappear in seven minutes. Questions. Questions so you can implement this. I want you guys, where's the cube? I want you guys to implement this when you get back. I want you guys, there's more tools in Smart Tribes. We have a bunch out there on the table. Where was the raise? Yes, yes, yes. I want you guys to have beautiful experiences with this. Thank you. This is really weird. How, can you talk about how this works for the young people up to 24, 27, for whom the prefrontal cortex is not yet fully developed? Like my daughter. Yes. Okay. And let's clap. That was a juicy one. Yeah. Okay. The prefrontal cortex for males is fully cooked at 25. So if you ask, this is why there's so much recruiting for the military early on. Because the guys go, oh, that looks like a really good idea. Yeah, I'm going to sign up for the military. Then they get there like, people are shooting at me. What? You know, and I've got a five-year contract or whatever that you can't get out of. Um, for women, the prefrontal cortex is cooked by 21. Okay? So the women make a little better decisions a little earlier on. Okay? We're working with one company where they just put a young man 
in a very powerful position, and he's 27 years old. He's had two years of a fully baked prefrontal cortex. It's not long enough okay, to make ginormous revenue decisions and to also manage people, which he has never done before. So, if that's going to happen, that person needs a leadership development program, some coaching. So one of our team members is coaching him because um, it's been made clear he will stay in that role. So we have to help him get up to speed quick like a bunny. This thing is always popping off my ear. Um, so when you have people who don't have a fully uh, baked PFC, it's really important to use the outcome frame so they start to understand the two most important aspects of emotional intelligence, which is self-awareness, which then helps us self-regulate. Self-awareness, wow, I'm feeling really frustrated right now. Ah, feeling frustrated, huh, what would I like? To not feel frustrated. Okay, well, what's the possible alternative? Because when you see the outcome frame, you're gonna see that you have to state it in the positive. The brain's not good with don't, not, etc. okay? Which is why it's like, yeah, no parking, yeah, uh-huh, I'll just park right there. Don't be late to the meeting. Yeah, okay, be late to the meeting, got it. So it works better to say thanks in advance for being on time. Thanks in advance for being there five minutes early so we can have a tribal gathering and get coffee and sit down and love each other up. Meeting starts at 10. Thanks for being there at 9.55. So when we have somebody who's not quite there yet, we want to use the outcome frame. We want to make sure if someone says, I don't know what I would like, I know what I would not like, Say, great, tell me things you would not like. Which one hurts the most? What's the positive alternative? I would not like so much stress. Okay, what would you like? And they might be in, I would not like so much stress. So, so what would be the opposite of not so much stress? Thank you, brother. He would like to be more calm. Yeah. Okay, great. What will have that do for you? How will you know when you happen? Then you're off to the races. So doing this with kids, they've got to be about five, five years old onward. Okay, about four, they become like a little human and they have like opinions. They start trying to take on the pain of their parents and all that juicy stuff starts to kind of woo at about four years old. So um, before that outcome frame doesn't totally work because they're kind of like, wah, wah, wah. I don't know, toys, you know. So um, use the outcome frame to start working on the self-awareness to then get the self-regulation. Good. I write for Forbes. If you want like more weird neuro stuff, you can get it every week at Forbes. If like this isn't enough. Um, good. Uh, one, whoa, one more question. Yes! And I'm going to get my cardio, which is awesome because I ate a scone and I shouldn't have. Okay, I'm going to do it. I don't want to hurt anybody. He's got gloves on. Um, cool. I write for ESPN. Just kidding. Um, so the question is, do you have some kind of guide somewhere where you can kind of more easily tell if somebody's wanting belonging or mattering or any of that? Or? Smart Tribes. Smart Tribes is um, our book. Smart Tribes, How Teams Become Brilliant Together. Um, we have them out front. Okay, let me ask a more interesting question. How do we apply this to Donald Trump? <laughs> I'm serious. Or, or, or his supporters. No offense. Okay, so, so we're not going to have any judgment here? Okay, because safety belonging mattering is awesome because it enables you to not have judgment about somebody's experience. We're just going to unpack what they want and help them get it. So let's just take a sec and unpack Donald Trump. What do you think Donald Trump craves most? Safety belonging mattering. Belonging. Yeah, belonging. that's kind of... Mattering. Belonging. Belonging. Mattering. Who does he want to belong with? Manhattan. Human. Okay, let's not have a judgment about rich people. Because I know a lot, of, a lot of rich people who are really, really, really awesome. Like Bill Gates. And, you know, we work with nine different billionaires at our company. And um, two of them can be difficult. But it's just because they don't feel they matter. Um, so when somebody craves the experience of mattering, right, we have an opportunity to show them ways that they can matter that will actually resonate with who they want to matter to. Because mattering actually has, right? There, it, mattering doesn't happen alone, right? You have to matter to somebody. Who does Donald Trump want to matter to? I think so too. I think 
between zero and seven, something happened in Donald Trump's uh, early development, which caused him to have an experience of not good enough. And he has been trying to, ha to feel good enough ever since then. So what is it that would be positive, you know? That's why it's like Mother Teresa totally nailed it. Um, she was invited to all these anti-war rallies, and she would say, I don't want to go because you're putting attention on war. Anti-war rally, you're putting attention on war. If you invite me to a pro-peace rally, I'm all over that. When you change the things you look at, the things you look at change. When you change the things you look at, yeah, work through that one, Joe. Yeah, when you change the things you look at, he's like, <sighs> the things you look at change. So why don't we stop looking at all the stuff we don't want with Trump and start looking at all the stuff we do want for the U.S.? That alone, what did the Dalai Lama say? I worked with the Dalai Lama for, for uh, his tour in the Midwest, and he had me clean toilets for, for two full days. And they were handing out tasks, like, who wants to clean the temple? Oh, pick me. And they didn't. And who wants to, like, meet the dignitaries? Oh, oh. No. I mean, I was, like, denied on everything. And then they're like, who wants to clean the toilets? And I'm like, oh, that's really going to suck. And I look side to side, and I'm like, oh, everyone, everybody was picked. It's me. Clean toilets for two days. Totally trashed my manicure. Totally trashed my Lululemons. But then he had me stand in front of 14,000 people to represent Buddhism. And I was like, ah, that's why I had to clean all the potties. Clean the potties, get the humility, stand in front of 14,000 people. Got it. Okay, so let's focus on what we want to create, which is possibly helping Americans have more of an experience of belonging with each other and being safe with each other and mattering with each other. Because in my 18 years of hospice with the 33 people I've helped die, I am positive that what we leave behind is the experience that we create in the hearts of others. What experiences are you creating in the hearts of others? You can do it every day. When you bring safety, belonging, mattering to people, many of them have never had that experience before. As a leader, you can create a workplace that is so powerfully embodying your higher purpose because you're bringing that. And if you need it, everybody gets it. I will say to my team sometimes, you know, I need some mattering here. I'm not feeling it. Oh, I need some safety. And they'll say, how will you know when you have it? And I'll tell them, and they'll help me create that. It's all bi-directional. Write down this word, and then I'll wrap. Together. Harvard proved recently that the word together conveys what? Safety, belonging, or mattering? All of them. We're in this together. Thank you so much for being together with me today. Mwah.